Good morning, everyone. So I had a, a contact on LinkedIn who asked me about how they could create a mission for Arducopter so that they could take off, uh, fly to a remote location, land, then wait, disarm, wait for a period of time, then arm again, then take off, and then fly back to the original location and then land and disarm, all done in a single mission. Now this is quite possible with RGPilot, but it may not be completely obvious all of the steps. And it requires a little bit of knowledge about our mission system and our auxiliary functions. Um, it actually can be done in several ways. And so what I'm gonna do is show the simplest way of achieving this particular result. And I'm gonna show it with the stable Copter 4.1 release. And uh, then more advanced users can do uh, things like waiting for a button press or waiting for uh, airspace clearance or other, other things by using a Lua script. But we're going to do it in this example without a Lua script. All right, so what I've got is a mission, pl a mission planner here. And I've got the copter sitting on the runway here at CMAC. I'm actually not connected at the moment. So I'll, I'll just go into the, the simulation and start our simulator. Now, uh, what I'm going to do is just move that out of the way up there. I'm going to wipe everything here because I want to show how to do this from scratch. So I'm not relying on any existing parameters. And so I'm going to launch the multi-rotor simulator. And it's going to ask me which version to use, the latest or the stable. You may remember our last video, I showed how to download a very particular version. We've now got a nice button for getting the stable release. Uh, so we can just hit stable to get the 4.1 version of the code. And it's now going to download the 4.1 stable version, and then it'll start it in the simulator. All right, so there we are, and it's going to come up and get the... Um, uh, GPS lock in a second, and there it is, sitting on the runway, um, ready for a takeoff. Okay, so there's a number of things we have to do in order to configure a vehicle for auto takeoff, remote landing, takeoff again, etc., because the defaults don't allow it. So what I'm going to do here, and I'll just move this video panel down there so we can see things. First of all, I'm going to go into the auto options and I'm going to change the options here to allow arming in auto mode so that we don't have to arm in another mode then change. The default in copters in ArduPilot is that you can't arm in auto mode. So you need to set this allow arming bit. Then we need to set this bit, the allow takeoff without raising throttle. Again, as a safety mechanism, if you, uh, when you do an automatic takeoff, we normally require that you raise the throttle on the transmitter. In this case, we're setting up a fully autonomous vehicle. We don't want that. So I'm allowing uh, takeoff without raising the throttle. All right. So let's go and write those couple of parameters. And now we'll start changing some other parameters. I'm going to go and change the mission parameters. And we've got this miss options, which allows us to control the way that the mission works. And there's an option continue after land. Now that is required for the, um, the mission that I've been asked about from this uh, user on LinkedIn. And uh, so we want to be able to land and then continue processing the mission onto the next mission items. All right, so we've got to do that. So I'm going to write that one in there. And I'm going to change a couple of other parameters. Um, it's convenient um, when you're working with the simulator. I find this automatic uh, delay disarm to be a little annoying when I'm working with the simulator. So I'm going to set that to zero to turn off the automatic uh, disarm when the copter is idle on the ground. Okay, and now I'm going to go and change uh, sim speed up because I get bored easily waiting for a slow simulator. So I'm going to multiply the simulation speed up by five. So it runs at five times real time. Oh, good. Okay, so now we've got all our basic parameters set up. 
And so there's our copter sitting there. We're in stabilized mode, which is the default for a you know newly set up vehicle. And we're going to go into our mission plan. So we need to start, I'll just move this over to a convenient position so we can see. And the first thing we're going to do, make a bit more space for our mission. It's going to have quite a few mission items in it, right? And this mission is going to be a bit advanced um, because it's going to include mission items that aren't even actually listed here. And I'll show you how to add unlisted mission items. So we're going to first of all do an easy one, which is a takeoff. So let's take off to 10 meters. Great. All right, so after we've taken off from here to 10 meters, we're going to fly out over here. So there's a waypoint also at 10 meters over there. And then we're going to land back here. So we'll add this one and we'll change that to being a land. And it's automatically put in zero meters for the land. It's always nice to land on the ground. Um, so that's our basic start. And I'm going to write that mission just to get the, the basics established. Now, the specification we had from the, the user was that it should then disarm. Now, this is where things get interesting, because if we add a mission item here, you'll find that there isn't an option here for disarm. All right. But you can do it. And that's because in uh, Copter 4.1, you can select a what's called an unknown uh, mission item. Now, because I'm only capturing this much of the window, um, I'll just move this up a little bit so hopefully you can see it more easily. There it is. So what I do is I select this one called Unknown, right, which allows you to add a mission ID that isn't known by Mission Planner. Okay, so now you can enter the command ID that you want to add. Now you might ask, well, how do I know what the command ID is that I want to do? Well, in this particular case, what we want to do is an arm and a disarm. And, um, you know, many of you know that on your RC transmitter, you can have a, a switch, for example, for arm disarm. All right. So ArduPilot has the ability to place switch movements into the mission. And it's called do auxiliary function. So what we can do is we have hundreds of auxiliary functions that ArduPilot can do, all sorts of things. You know, you can ask it to do a flip. You can ask it to do, I don't know, disarm, arm, um, LED control. There's literally, you know, a huge number of these, these things. So how do you find them? Okay, so this is where we get a little bit more advanced. And what I'm going to do, this is, first of all, I want to show you how to get the command ID here, right? And so what I'm going to do is bring up the XML file called ArduPilot Megadot XML, and that's in this location, right? It's on, if you go to uh, github.com ArduPilot, you'll find that we have this Mavlink repository. Within the Mavlink repository, we have the message definitions, and we have ArduPilot's message definitions. And if I search here, for do orgs, if I type it correctly, right, do orgs function. There it is. Great. So what we've got here, and it keeps flipping back, is do orgs function is entry 218. Okay, so we pop in here 218. All right, so there's our magic ID. So we've got this 218 ID that we've set up in the mission. Now, what do you do with 218? If you have a look at the definition of 218, it gives, it says you've got a, the first parameter is the auxiliary function you want to execute. So which, which switch are you simulating and what the switch position is? And you can look up what this thing is, but the simplest thing is zero means in the low position, two means in the high and one means in the mid. So zero, one, two, you can have a three position switch and you can move that switch inside a mission. Okay, so what we're going to do is we, oh, next thing we need to know is which auxiliary function is it for arming and disarming? All right, so let's pop back here and that's in this location. So this, again, I went to GitHub ArduPilot and I had a look in the Copter 4.1 branch because we're running Copter 4.1 and libraries rc channel rc channel.h. 
right? So you wind your way in there and you discover these. Now, many of these are actually listed on NanoWiki, but um, not all of them are caught up. And I wanted to show you how to go to the actual source to find the, the ultimate definitions, particularly as this particular one for arming and disarming has recently changed because there's been a, in the 4.2 release, which Prio is starting to prepare now, we're changing the way it works with regard to air mode and arming. And as part of that, we've changed this ID in the master branch to 153. If you have 41, it gets auto converted to 153 when you upgrade. But we're, we're running 4.1. So what we need to do is set this in our mission, the arm disarm to item number 41. Okay, so we're you know, halfway down the rabbit hole here. So what we want to do is we set this to uh, auxiliary function 41, and we want to set zero, meaning moving the switch to the low position for disarming. Okay, so we're going to take off, move to waypoint, land, and disarm. All right, now the next thing that this user on LinkedIn asked for was a delay. Okay, so let's go and add in, and we can put a delay, and how many seconds do we want to delay? Let's say um, 30 seconds. Though remember that we're going to run the simulator with a five times speed up. So that'll actually only be six seconds of waiting around. All right. So next we're going to add a, after the delay, we need to arm the vehicle. So we need to add again another of these unknown parameters. Right. And remember it was 218 for an auxiliary function. And then I want it to be arm disarm, and this time the switch position two. So this will mean that we're executing this auxiliary function 41, arm disarm, with option number two for raising the switch, and it'll then raise the switch again and arm. Okay, what do we want to do next? Next, we want to do a takeoff. So let's go and do our takeoff to say 10 meters. All right, and now we're going to fly back over, say, here, this way, right, a waypoint. Again, let's, oh, let's go 15 metres. We'll go a little bit higher this time. And finally, we want to come back to this location, and I'm going to put a land, and this could be a different location or the same location, you know, we might land. Maybe we'll land up here in front of this spot there. All right, there you go. We could also just tell it to do an RTL. So we're going to land and we're now going to write that mission. All right, and let's read that mission back and it's going to, you know, clear and read it and we're all good. So let's check it all. So we've got a takeoff to 10 meters. Then we've got a waypoint out here and then we've got a landing over here. And then we've got this one marked unknown, which is auxiliary switch 41 disarm. Then we're going to delay for 30 seconds. Then we're going to auxiliary switch 41 arm again. Then we're going to take off. Then we're going to fly out to this waypoint over here. And then we're going to come back and land at this point in the middle here. Okay, so we've got ourselves a mission. Let's see how it goes. We're in stabilize mode. I'm going to pop us into auto mode. And then I'm going to arm. Now, remember, I've set up this vehicle to allow arming in auto mode. That was the auto options bit. So let's go. And there it is doing the takeoff. And there it's flying over there and flying over here. And then it's going to come in and land. Now it's disarmed, right? But it hasn't finished its mission. And we've got to wait six seconds of wall clock time. And now it's armed again. And now it's taking off and it's flying over there. And now it's flying back here. Then it's going to come back and disarm. And there we are. We finished the mission. All good. So uh, if you want to repeat the mission, by the way, with the way the mission logic works, you'll need to uh, change modes and then back again. So if we go change mode and then go back to auto mode and then arm again, then it'll do the entire cycle again. And uh, so, okay, I hope this helps. Um, so this is a bit more advanced mission planning than most people do. It's very useful using the simulator uh, for doing this. And of course, 
if you really wanted to do this on a real vehicle, a complex, a package delivery vehicle or whatever, the way to go actually is to use a Lua script, an onboard Lua script. Um, and that gives you much more sophisticated control. You could do things like, you know, wait for a button press, so you could wait for airspace clearance, you could have communication to a payload system, etc. So Lua scripts are the way to do the really complex uh, mission planning, but you can do quite a lot with just the, the normal mission logic. All right, so happy flying and um, hope you enjoy uh, enjoyed the uh, demonstration. <laughs> right.